Hi there. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of low-level invasions lately, and I've been thinking about a new weapon. So I was poking around in my inventory, looking at the weapons I had, checking out the various infusion types, especially since a number of them got recent buffs. And I happened to notice the Dragon Slayer's Axe with the raw infusion gets a substantial bump in the physical damage department, but leaves the lightning damage untouched. Uh, I haven't done the math, but it looks to be at least a 30 or 40 point bump. Uh, this weapon does quite a bit of damage to begin with. A 40 point bump, especially at this level, uh, is really substantial. A 40 point bump on a plus 10 weapon would be notable, but especially a plus 4, uh, this is really huge. And you see here I buff it briefly uh, with a bundle and it's hitting for 453 AR. Now that's a split damage. Uh, AR so it's not quite as awesome as it sounds but it is still a huge huge amount of damage in here I check it with just a, a regular uh, lightning buff and it's at 428 still very respectable but not as good as the bundle so I lose about 30 points of AR when I go with the regular lightning buff right with the resin rather than with the bundle so this gets me very very excited and I just cannot wait to take this out for a stroll and see what kind of damage I'm able to do um, I mentioned in my previous videos, I'm staying away from Crucifixion Woods. Uh, Crucifixion Woods with a plus four weapon, uh, to say nothing of a weapon like this, uh, is just pure murder on hosts. Even with a Phantom, they really don't pose much of a challenge that gets old really fast. You know, I'm not into just twinking for the sake of twinking and griefing hosts. Uh, I still want there to be a challenge. Uh, I'm all about leveling the playing field, but I'm not looking to tilt it too far in my uh, favor either. So I'm trying to catch up with the party here. I'm not bothering with the obscuring ring. I've got the hornet ring equipped. I'm just going for maximum damage here. So I'm gonna try and catch up to them. They seem to be having a rough time of it already. They're taking quite a bit of damage. Um, and then I spot them up here and immediately go for the buff. So I'm not sure at this point if the host is kind of just hanging back because he doesn't want any part of me or if he thinks maybe he's going to let us uh, duel if I'll duel with the sun bro. And you can see I just erased half his health with a single R1 and I can see the host coming in from behind me now. Um, but it's too late. This thing just does monstrous amounts of damage. Now lightning damage actually or lightning defense rather scales. I believe with your endurance. Um, so fortunately at these lower levels, most folks don't have a lot. And this host, I think, made a poor decision in trying to move forward through the level instead of trying to move behind. And unfortunately these Grave Wardens are one of those enemies, that even though there's not a seed active, even though the Grave Warden isn't targeting me per se, he's still doing damage to me every time he swings. Normally here I would try to roll in front of the host and then he would push me in front of him as the door opened, but with this Grave Warden here, I don't want to take the chance of getting caught and just getting murdered by the Grave Warden. So at this point, I'm not sure what the host game is, if he's trying to make it to the bonfire and get the shortcut open before I kill him, uh, or if he's hoping to go back and summon more Phantoms. Not quite sure. Definitely still had enough time to pick up those dual charms though. So I'm already thinking plunging attack here. I'm not able to get it. I dropped down too quickly, but now he's really stuck and screwed. I actually meant to wave to him there. I accidentally pointed at him. It seemed kind of cool, so I kept it. I'm really still trying to get the hang of this area. Um, I know it fairly well, but not as well as you need to know it from an invasion perspective. Um, so I'm still looking for all the cues that a host has been through a particular area. Now I know um, the enemy that crawls on all fours and has the maggots that I just saw there a moment ago, he had not been disturbed. I think the guy sitting there that I just passed is also an indication that the host has not been by, but I still don't trust that 100%. So I'm not sure if they're trying to get ahead of me here and come up from behind or if they're just trying to avoid all these uh, enemies. But either way, I'm not going to let them get in front of me.
And this kind of changes things because I see another dark spirit invade, but there's only these two guys and they don't exactly seem very uh, confident in their PvP game. And the only reason another dark spirit could invade is if they have the dried fingers active. So it's possible they hit the dried fingers because they're just looking for some PvP, but more likely they were trying to find more summon signs. And you can see with this uh, buff up on my axe, I was hitting through the phantom shield to the tune of 110 points of damage, which is really quite a bit uh, to chip through their shield. Most of these shields don't have very good lightning defense. Uh, complicating matters even further now, we have a blue on the way. So I decide to back up a bit, make sure I don't get pinned. Just trying to create a little bit of pressure for these guys with the Undead Hunter charms. Doesn't really seem to have phased them very much though. Oh, this axe hits hard. And now I see the other invader get into the mix and now I know shit is on. We're gonna split them apart and now they probably aren't gonna have very much long to live. Kind of waiting for him to try the uh, the life drain here with the newly buffed dark hand, but he makes the mistake of trying to block too long. I break his guard and that's it. I'm definitely a yellow finger sort of guy when it comes to camaraderie with my fellow invaders. I love that shit. Here we have an invasion already in progress. I trimmed out the first few minutes because it was pretty boring. Uh, essentially, it's a lone host uh, and one of the blue summons. The blue summon seems to have somewhat of an idea of what he's doing. Uh, he's switched back and forth from that uh, larger shield to assess this. So I'm a little worried about getting parried. This is a slower axe. And actually, something interesting that happened, uh, starting around a couple months ago, I noticed I was getting parried a lot more often. Uh, even in situations where I would approach and not swing and not swing, and I would hold off and hold off two, three, four seconds with a straight sword and swing and get parried with a cestus. And initially, I thought it was luck, but it just happened too many times and it just was really bothering me. Uh, a friend of mine and I had tried to set up uh, matches and we had tried to parry a straight sword on reaction with Asestus and neither one of us were able to do it. So I assumed that it couldn't be done, but I decided to double check and I posted something on Reddit about it and a number of folks were able to successfully convince me that you can in fact react parry a straight sword. Now what's interesting is I mentioned this started happening a few months ago. Well, starting about two months ago, uh, I have very, very good internet. Uh, the latency is typically pretty low. Um, obviously it depends on the person to whom I'm connecting. Uh, but the biggest thing that changed a couple months ago is I switched my PS4 over from a Wi-Fi connection to a wired ethernet connection. Um, and I think just that extra bit of latency mitigation not sure why I didn't get the parry there. He must have been too far away. Um, I think that extra bit of latency mitigation was just enough so that people that had previously probably been a little bit late on their reaction Cestus parries were now able to land them. So it's really forced me to change up my game a lot and I'm a lot more paranoid of getting parried now. I charged that R2 fortunately just a little bit longer and I avoid the Cestus parry. You know those charged R2s man, people that like to parry, they just can't resist taking a whack at that. That's a really good way to punish people. Um, you just sit there and hold it and hold it and usually what I like to do is wait till I see the parry come out and then let it go. Um, on a very rare occasion I've had somebody actually wait through the whole charging of the R2 and parry it at the very end. But that is definitely a minority of cases. And of course, if they whiff it, they're gonna take a fully charged R2. So uh, I think it's probably a trade worth making, but it's definitely something to be wary of. One thing you have to be really careful of 
you have somebody that's parry happy, you definitely do not want to use uncharged R2s because if they're trying to parry you on reaction, that extra bit of delay that the R2 gives is just enough that often you'll swing right into their parry. So you either want to use the R1 or you want to charge the R2, but you don't want to use the R2 uncharged with just a little bit of charge or you'll just walk right into their parry. So these guys are being pretty smart. They're not chasing after me too much. I've had to kind of work to draw them out a little bit. For whatever reason, I didn't have my crossbow out earlier and I realized that, kind of a big mistake, this guy can't heal anymore. He's out of Estes. And if you're an invader uh, and you've just got a single host, you have to be able to take those fights. Um, you have way more experience and practice than they do. So once I get it down to the host, I know victory is essentially ensured. Again, I see these guys seated. I'm almost positive that means the host hasn't been this way, but I'm just double checking because I'm close over to this area and I don't have to come all the way back here if I'm wrong. I'm also, I'm trying to use my consumables more. I, I never really use those. I never use throwing bombs. Um, I never used to use undead hunter charms. I never used to use the grass for stamina recovery. And I'm making a concerted effort to try to work those into my game and give myself a few extra advantages. Especially with this build, I have not made any investments into my stamina, so my stamina is very low. The Prisoner's Chain is giving me a little bit of an extra boost, but still very easy to run out of stamina on this character. So anything I can do to help with the recovery is really great. Now the Chlorinthy Ring really doesn't do dick for stamina recovery. I never use that. The Chlorinthy Ring Plus 2 actually does a pretty reasonable job of stamina recovery, um, and I believe it stacks with the, uh, with the grass. Um, but I've got more important things to do with my ring slots. The Hornet Ring uh, is just so important, in, uh, especially in these low-level invasion builds. Actually, in any ones. I mean, at the higher levels, it gives you a really good shot at one-shotting phantoms. And when I play with those big strength weapons, I'm less afraid to come in and mix it up directly with a party with two or three phantoms at the same time, because I know I can get a uh, Hornet Repost and that's going to uh, end one of the phantoms. With this kind of build where I can't one-shot people, I need to be a lot more careful about getting in a direct fight with two or three enemies at the same time. These lower level invasions, I really recommend them. If, if you're thinking about getting started with invasions or maybe you've tried invasions in the past and they didn't really work out for you, um, that candelabra seemed to stick out for some reason, so I decided to make sure it wasn't the host. If you've thought about giving them a try, or maybe they haven't worked out for you in the past, give low-level invasions a try. They are so much more forgiving uh, than the higher-level invasions. The hosts typically are not as skilled, um, and you can give yourself a lot of advantages. When you get closer to level 120, the difference in your ability to do damage in comparison to a host is fairly negligible. And I can see this guy really wants to backstab me, um, but I'm also wary of getting parried. And I know it's what he's trying to do, and I'm still being careful, at least I thought I was, and he gets the backstab off anyway, so now I'm kind of pissed off. I see he hasn't tried to parry me, so I'm getting a bit more aggressive in how I swing. He's not lowering his shield at all, which is really dangerous because that's what happens if you get card broken. And you can see uh, with the Dragon Slayer Axe, even without it being buffed, the Riposte was able to do well over uh, half his health and destroy him. That's it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed.